What is going on, everybody? And welcome to the From Morning to Action, Powerfully Working Through Laws podcast. I am your host, Dr. Damon Silas, and I am so thrilled to have you on today's episode, as I am every time you tune in. I greatly appreciate your support. So uh, first and foremost, let me just start by saying thank you. You know, thank you for listening and thank you for tuning in because without you, there wouldn't be this podcast, you know, so I could not do this without you and your support. So from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it. So today, um, we're going to do another mini-sode, a little solo-sode, if you will, Um, and there are two more left of these types of episodes where I'm going to be talking about the last two parts of the ACTION acronym. So as you may or may not know, if you haven't had a chance to listen to any prior or previous uh, podcasts, this podcast is based on my two books, From Morning to Night, Overcoming Loss, and that's more of a memoir uh, about the different losses that I've been through in my life and how I've worked through them, but not only that, but also how I've helped other people in my position as a psychologist, as a mental health clinician, um, I've helped other people to work through their losses as well. So that's the first book. The second book is What's Your Action Plan? Six Powerful Ways to Get Unstuck in Your Life Now. And the rationale for that book was more uh, so that It can give you, the listener, the reader, some more tangible action items to take from the different losses. Um, But also when uh, when we experience loss, we can tend to feel stuck in that cycle of darkness and heaviness and weight and um, pain and hurt and sadness and all those those ugly, icky feelings that we tend to feel when we're stuck and we're going through loss. And um, we actually identify loss as a very broad range of things. So even if you go back to other podcasts in this in this series of podcasts that I've recorded with people and have had the honor to do so, um, you'll hear people talking about whether it's a loss of a loved one, it could be a loss of identity, a loss of um, loss of their religion as they knew it growing up. So there are all sorts of different ways that we define loss here on this podcast. That being said, do yourself a favor and check them out. You know, maybe there's one that kind of stands out to you a little bit more than the others. Maybe there's one that has to do with the loss of a sibling and you've lost a sibling. Or maybe there's one that has to do with, uh, you know, trying to find your identity. Maybe a part of your identity was kind of taken from you uh, and unexpectedly. And you're just trying to figure out who you are in this world and how you operate moving forward. So there are episodes that kind of correlate and align with each of those losses that I hope that you can relate to on some level. Even if it may look a little bit different from yours on the surface, the point is we all experience the same feelings. So while my loss may look different from yours on the surface, we are all human. And being human, we have emotions and we go through stuff that all looks the same. So, um, yeah, check it out. Anyway, so uh, (laughs) now that I've said all that, um, I want to go into the O of the action plan. And and the O is all about opening up to people, opening up to others in your life. And this kind of entails a little bit of vulnerability. So if you're familiar with Brene Brown, um, it, it may kind of ring true to some of the things that she talks about and And so um, we're going to talk about the O today. Once you answer all the questions from the previous podcast, and that's from the I podcast, the introspection one, and you start to realize that you have more work to do than you thought, it's time to turn the focus outward. You've already done the inner hard work. Now you get to share the love with others. I mean, what good is making those internal changes, improvements, and discoveries if you can't share with everyone else? After all, sharing is caring. So this leads to our next letter, O. O is for a level of openness, or as I like to term it, we-ness. We-ness is about a connection with others. As we all know, we're not islands all living separately and distinctly from each other. We all depend on other people to provide at least one thing to and for us. Whether it's our clothing, our food, our medication, our paychecks... We all rely on someone else. 
even if you're reading this completely off the grid right now, you still had to rely on A, me to write this book so you could even gain access to it, B, some means of getting the book, whether through a vendor in person, online, or even your local library, C, the means to get paid by someone to then purchase the book, and D, your mom to give birth to you so that you could be here actually able to read this book and not including those who taught you to read. So I think you get my point. Though we sometimes would like to be as detached and far removed from others, we are all interrelated and thus interdependent. We truly do not exist in a vacuum, though I'm sure there are those of you out there who wish that was or could be the case. So why do I say all this? It's because we all rely on each other for our sustainment, our life. In the Buddhist tradition, they talk a lot about how we all enter our, that we as people are connected with each other and connected with nature and earth and none of us could exist without the other. We've taken a dive internally. Now it's time to spread that newfound awareness and knowledge. I learned about the importance of sharing my story and by being vulnerable when I attended a seminar that discussed the fact that our stories are the only things that connect us and that keep us alive. It was with this recognition that I began to write my first book from morning to night, Overcoming Loss. You see, I didn't start to write any of it as a book or as something that would become public. It was truthfully just supposed to be a journal, an extended diary entry, a personal memoir that I would keep forever to myself. But the more I spoke about the simple idea of having a manuscript of a book to others, the more they encouraged me to publish this book. Without telling others and thus making myself accountable for this action, I would not have a book still. It would have been sitting on my computer as a Word document waiting to be discovered long after I pass away. And truth be told, at some point, that was my hope, that I could avoid the hard work of actually publishing the book and that someone one day would magically find it on my computer and thus complete the job that I started. What a cop-out. Good thing that was not the case. I was initially worried about how people would respond to the book. I mean, it was about the personal losses I have experienced, some of which others I knew definitely wouldn't be able to relate to. But with their encouragement and positive words, I found a publishing company who was willing and able to help me put this bad boy in motion. And despite that feeling of dread of, what did I just do when I finally hit submit on my manuscript? There was no taking it back at that point. I couldn't get a refund on the money I spent, stop them dead in their tracks in the publishing process. It was scary and vulnerable. All of those things that far too often keep people locked within their own personal prisons, keep them slaves to their own emotional states, especially fear of how they will be seen and judged by others. Somehow I knew and realized that it was much bigger than me and that much like in my work as a psychologist, if I could help one person with my message, then it would be well worth it. We all have something to say. Sometimes we just don't have the means to do so, the courage to do so, or the support to do so. But many times, people find that once they're able to get those things off of their chest, not only does it feel as though a weight was lifted off of their shoulders, but that in some way, whether precisely or similarly, that other person can relate to what they're going through. And by sharing, by opening up, by being vulnerable, they now have opened the door for the receiver of that information to be free and open with themselves. It creates a ripple effect. Single seeds only grow the trees, as Odyssey, one of my favorite and most thought-provoking and prolific hip-hop artists out there, says. It's time to start sowing those seeds. Well, not those seeds, but (laughs) the seeds of hope, of vulnerability, of growth. It makes me think of one of the most popular TED Talks out there, or one of the most watched, I should say. It's by Brene Brown, who also happens to be the author of Daring Greatly, as well as many other books, even since I wrote this one. I was turned on to Brene Brown from a friend of mine with whom I was having a conversation one day. We were discussing the power of being open, honest, and vulnerable. She stated that I would love this book, and so, trusting her word, I immediately downloaded it and read it probably within two days. It was intriguing, fascinating, and I could relate to everything she was saying on so many levels. Her work has taken her on a journey to discover what vulnerability is about, and this book is the product of that work. 
She discusses the differences between a shame culture and one where you're lifted up when opening yourself up. It really is a powerful testament to putting yourself in a position you may otherwise not have due to fear of rejection, shame, embarrassment, and the like. Do yourself a favor and put yourself in a vulnerable position. Practice it. As with all things, practice makes permanent. The more you practice, it's not that it becomes perfect as all things in each moment are perfect exactly as they are. Rather, it makes it a permanent way of life and of being for you. So I encourage you to choose a moment today to be vulnerable and open to sharing a part of yourself with someone that you otherwise would have kept to yourself. Now, keep in mind to not be what my friend and I once dubbed an oversharer. You don't want to just walk up to someone and begin to spill your guts about your life in its entirety. People don't want that, and that's not the aim of this. Rather, it's about connecting with someone on a level where you will know when you're holding back and when it's time to simply let them into a part of yourself that you otherwise would have closed off. You would have closed that part off for numerous reasons, including fear of being judged, fear of being embarrassed by what that person thinks about what you say, or a fear of being rejected by that person in one way or another. Courage is really about fighting through that fear or doing something despite that fear. It's not about getting rid of fear. That's impossible and defeats the purpose of being a human being with a full range of feelings. So try it and see how you feel. Notice how you fought through those tough feelings to reveal something you otherwise would have kept hidden. Do you feel liberated as though a weight has been lifted off of your shoulders or chest? Notice the self-criticism you may now have, doubting whether or not you should have said those things. And that's just your internal gremlin giving you a hard time because you went against what you normally do. Don't pay much attention to him or her. Their job has been to protect you from further hurt, but that is not needed in every situation. Acknowledge and show that gremlin appreciation while also acknowledging the part of you that did something out of your comfort zone. Guess what? You survived. You lived to tell about it. Did that person respond to you the way that you thought or differently? Regardless how they received the information, the point is that you shared. So go ahead and pat yourself on the back for that. And you may have even noticed that the person was in that moment ready and willing to share a part of themselves that they had kept hidden or internal. Just by virtue of you opening up, you allowed them a space to do the same, resulting in not one, but two people who are now a little more free, a little lighter. Congratulations. The world is instantly a better place because two people no longer have to carry around the burden of shame as heavily as they and you once did. As we are all interconnected, you have now created a different world and energy within our world that will reverberate onward in a positive direction. So thank you for doing that. I am grateful for you doing that for yourself and others around you, for the greater good and at the highest level of what is intended for you. So that, my friends, is the O of the action plan. I hope you received value from this. And again, even as we talk about these letters and even as you uh, listen to previous podcasts, please feel free to leave some messages, leave some comments in the in the comment section of the podcast. I would love to hear your feedback, you know, good, bad, and different, whatever it is. Um, I won't take any offense to it because I think the more that I learn and the more that I hear from you, the more that I know how to tailor this podcast and in what direction to take it. So I just greatly appreciate it as I started off this conversation by uh, giving my gratitude and thanks to you, the listener. And um, I look forward to the next one where we talk about the end of the action plan. So thank you again for tuning in. Peace, love, and light, y'all. This is Dr. Damon Silas signing off. Bye. From morning to action, powerfully working through loss, is a podcast based on Dr. Damon Silas's two books. The first is From Morning to Night, Overcoming Loss, and the second one is What's Your Action Plan? Six Powerful Ways to Get Unstuck in Your Life Now. Be sure to check those two books out on the website, www.damonsilaspsychology.com forward slash store. You can also go on Amazon, Barnes.